variant, price variant, date stamp, CCA, square bow. Have no clue what I'm talking about? If so, you need to stay tuned to this video. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. This is part four of a series where I try to break down some commonly used lingo in the comic book community. We're going to go over seven different terms over the course of this video. I hope you enjoy it. The first term that we're going to discuss is variant. A variant is basically a non-standard version of a comic that can be either planned or unplanned. An unplanned variant could be a printing error that results in a red cover being turned black, for example. A planned variant, on the other hand, could include comics with alternative pricing or unique cover art produced by well-known artists. Whether planned or unplanned, Part of what makes a variant valuable is its scarcity. Printing malfunctions that produce errors are often fixed quickly, which results in few of the errors being distributed. Covers produced by well-known artists are often produced in limited quantities, which creates a sense of exclusivity. I'll get to price variants in a moment. The first variant cover is believed to be the Man of Steel, written and drawn by John Byrne in 1986. Variants were incredibly popular in the 90s and have recently made a resurgence. In fact, The Amazing Spider-Man 800 is rumored to feature more than 35 variant covers. Price Variant As the name implies, this comic features non-standard pricing. A Type 1 price variant is used by a publisher to test a market's receptivity to higher prices on a comic. I believe that both Marvel and DC have employed price variants repeatedly over the years, which has resulted in some highly sought after variants. There is also something called a Type 1A price variant. A Type 1A price variant is a comic that is produced to be sold outside of the United States. The books sold in the UK, for example, are identical to those sold in the US with the exception of the price. Date Stamp When books arrived at the newsstand, a retailer would mark the book with the date to track how long the comics were on the racks. The reason being that unsold books could be returned to the publisher for credit on future purchases. The date stamp ranged from inked rubber stamps to handwritten dates. For more information on newsstand comics, be sure to check out part three of this video series. Pence Stamp. Around 1959, a UK-based importer of American comic books, Thorpe Importer, used a rubber stamp to price books to be sold in the UK. The stamp indicated the price that retailers should charge customers once the books were distributed to the various retail outlets. Based upon my research, the use of the pence stamp was short-lived as publishers eventually produced pence price variants. For more information on this, be sure to check out part three in this video series. Square bound. Regular comic books are stapled down the middle, at the top and the bottom, and essentially attach the comic's cover to the interior pages. The staple's crown is on the outside of the book, with the teeth of the staple at the center of the comic. With this setup, the staple basically divides the book in half. With square bound books, the interior pages of the comic are stapled together. The crown is on the back side of the last page and the teeth are folded on the top of the book. The cover is attached to the bound book by glue. Trade paperback. A trade paperback is basically a collection of stories reprinted from a comic in book format. A trade paperback or trade as it is often called will contain a single title of a comic a series of stories from that title, or a story arc across titles. CCA. Controversy surrounding comics started in the 1930s, 
when educators, civil groups, and religious leaders question the impact of comics on adolescent minds. Mental health experts added to the chorus against the dangers of comics well into the 1950s. One such critic, a New York-based psychiatrist, even wrote a book entitled Seduction of the Innocent to urge the federal government to intervene. That same year, the U.S. Senate Subcommittee on Juvenile Delinquency started an investigation to determine the impact of mass media on adolescents. In an effort to avoid federal regulation, comic publishers formed the Comic Magazine Association of America and quickly drafted and adopted strict regulations around sex, drugs, and violence. This purge of all things questionable remained in place until 2011, when the last major publisher withdrew from the association. From 1954 to 2011, most comics published by Marvel, DC, Archie, and a few other publishers feature the Comic Code of Authority seal of approval.